MWI speaker event for the community that can make it. Um, today we have Dr. Charles Morgan coming to talk to us about uh, neuroscience and psychology and a whole, a whole gamut of things. Um, right now he is a professor of national security studies at the University of New Haven. Uh, his focus is teaching uh, national security studies, domestic and international intelligence uh, analysis, and issues in deception. Dr. Morgan is developing a concentration in the human aspects, intelligence analysis, and psycho uh, psychological operations arenas that are relevant to the intelligence community. Um, he has a pretty robust background with military folks, doing research at SEER school, helping with selection processes for special operations forces down at Fort Bragg, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So without further ado, I will hand it off to you. Thank you. So think about it. If you change the past, you change human behavior. We are a case-based reasoning animal. When we think about what we're gonna do, we think about the last time we did something, or the, what we heard about, or what we think it would have done. So to change human motivation, we don't have to persuade people. You can just change their memory. Holocaust survivor. Students watched the documentary that features Klein's story and were able to ask her questions afterwards. She was 15 when the Nazis invaded Poland and survived years in a concentration camp. Klein's message to students today, not to take their freedom for granted. So when we increased the stress at SEER, we found that instead of a 30% rate overall, we could create false memories in nearly everyone. That was in 900 people. <laughs> But in the current social media age, the ability to actually manage people's memories and change them is, is just enhanced compared to what it used to be. Now you can, you can fix videos and pictures and expose people to audio and visual uh, information. And we know that even if they know that's a possibility, people don't recognize when they adopt a false memory. It's a, it's a bit of a Trojan horse effect. You don't know that it's happened to you. And if you're smart and you have a good memory, you'll believe that happens to other people, but not you, because your memory is true. So it bypasses some critical reasoning on our part, uh, and I think it's particularly, uh, it's particularly effective. What we're doing tonight is a walk through time, our culminating event for our community. Parents and community members were drawn to the school by a special exhibit. I see a big, huge crowd. On a not so beautiful part of American history. We've learned about slavery in West Africa and colonial America throughout the year, and we're presenting it. So many of these kids hadn't heard hardly anything about this time in history. Um, and quite frankly, we're completely shocked and um, upset by it. Learning about the realities and the, the brutality um, of what these 12.5 million um, people who were enslaved had to go through. We really want to cultivate um, kids who want to go out in the world and change it to make it a better place. We did this so we can empower the world um, to not do this again and stop it from happening. The students were able to um, show their learning and teach the community about the history of slavery in our country and the lasting impacts it's had um, on race relations today. And this is a perfect time in history for them to learn from so that we don't make the same mistakes that we've made in the past. For them to go out, stand up for what they believe in, and fight against social injustices that they see in the world. So. Uh, and I think it's particularly, uh, it's particularly effective.